So I was standing in front of the South Tower when I heard this loud noise that sounded like a hundred freight trains riding down the rails and looked up and saw that the South Tower was starting to collapse in slow motion. Instinctively, I brought a camera up to my eye. A voice in the back of my head said, run. I, I landed about half a block further away from the buildings that I started, but somehow managed to hold on to two cameras that were around my shoulders. And about 90 frames, 90 photographs that I had taken in the previous 40 minutes. It was a beautiful, beautiful morning until 8.48 a.m. All of a sudden, the police radio started to scream. A plane has hit the World Trade Center. The building's on fire. So this big red fire truck. So I started following them. Uh, these are firefighters that I've covered for years, and they're waving to me. There were 11 firefighters on Rescue One that morning. All 11 of them died on September 11th. They were in their own hearse going to their own funerals. They just didn't realize it yet. After the first plane had already hit, there were a massive amount of debris on the street. There were cars burning, just kept on taking pictures and heard a loud noise that seemed to come from all over, but from nowhere in particular. I was standing in front of the South Tower when it got hit and it just blew out in a plume of smoke and flame. And it was um, highlighted by that beautiful blue sky. What I had initially thought was an accident all of a sudden became an intentional act of hostility. I realized I was on a very big story, looking up and seeing uh, parts of the building fall down, seeing glass falling down, seeing flames, and then seeing people starting to fall down and capturing New Yorkers, helping other New Yorkers photographs of people running with serving trays over their heads that they had grabbed at the Marriott Hotel to protect themselves from the falling debris. A woman whose high heels were in her hands, she was running barefoot through the broken glass and pieces of metal. Uh, a parks police officer helping a severely burned woman turned and I ran and as I was running, I got picked up by a wave, got picked up and tossed. Wound up buried under a bunch of debris. My mouth was clogged with dirt and ash and pulverized powdered parts of the building. You know, my leg was shattered. I had burns, I had cuts, I had damage to the other leg, inhalation injuries. And I thought I was gonna die by myself face down in the gutter of New York City streets and heard a voice um, that said to me, don't worry, brother, we'll get you out. A bunch of firefighters from Engine 217 in Brooklyn pulled the debris off of me, dug with their hands and tools, whatever was on top of me, and got me out from underneath the, uh, the pile. Another couple of rescuers, Jeff Porkowski and Phil McArdle, picked me up carried me back towards Battery Park City and put me on the floor of a delicatessen. There were people praying, there were people crying, there were people silent, all just wanting to survive though. When the dust cleared from the second collapse, Jim Keller and Charlie Wells and a third rescuer, appears to be a firefighter, he's not wearing a helmet and um, to this day, we haven't been able to find them, haven't been able to identify who another one of my guardian angels was that morning. There are not words or actions that I can pass on that would adequately say thank you to the people who saved my life that day. The photographers who took pictures on September 11th, 2001, weren't taking photos for the next day's paper where we, we were recording history forever. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.